Uh, we're now going to move on to a more sedge-like pattern and this time one for occasions when you're looking for more buoyancy. Um, someone mentioned it previous to um, putting the video up that actually they don't like CDC because they find that it, it often sinks and that might be the case if you were using something like the F-Fly in fast turbulent water where it can easily get dragged in by the current and at which point it will get quite waterlogged and start sinking. Um, being a delicate feather, it works best on, on flatter surfaces. Um, but it's such a great fly for, it's such a great material for when the fish actually take because it crumples under their mouth so you get a better hook hold. Um, so I tend to favor CDC based wings over um, deer hair only wings because you quite often find that uh, you have a, a certain amount of tapes that will get pushed away or uh, that you wouldn't, don't necessarily hook up on. And I feel that's because deer hair won't crumple under the take, it'll actually just get pushed away from the fish. Um, so one workaround for this where you're faced by turbulent water uh, but also the possibility of fish taking aggressively and, and actually almost missing the fly uh, is to combine some CDC with some deer hair. So you take the positives of both materials, uh, reduce them a little bit, put them together um, and, and really get the, almost the best of both worlds. Um, so again, stuck with the black 18 nano silk just back from the eye of the hook and begin winding that back. Just trim that out. Have a quick. So what we want to do, take that thread all the way to the end of the straight part of the shank. Body color here is really personal preference. Uh, I'm going to stick with a uh, super fine uh, dry fly dubbing. Uh, this is in March Brown, so it's a, a sort of cinnamony brown color. And again, just straighten it off. Trap it in by the small selection at the top. And what you'll notice with a lot of Caddis flies. If you look at the, um, um, if you look at the um, the body on a on a sedge, uh, it's actually quite uniform, grub-like. So we don't want that mayfly style taper going forward. We actually just want a very quick taper and then a uniform body all the way along. So what I'll do. The nice thing about these long fiber super fine dubbings is you can hold the end and backwind on it to help create that body and you'll notice that I don't mind it being quite rough along the body because I'll stroke it along and I use some of that roughness to brush out the fibers. I'll add a fraction more but not a lot because I want to leave a decent amount at the front um, for tying in the wing. So just, just enough that we've got that nice body shape. So by all means tie some of these with a grey body or with a with a caddis green, so a really vibrant green. Um, I like the brown, I think it covers a lot of situations. And then as with uh, the previous fly, the F-fly, uh, we're going to find three feathers that we like the look of and match them together tip, tip to tip, all facing the same direction and match together, stroking the fibers back so we get all the good fibers go in the right direction 
and as before we want the wing to overshoot the body and the rear part of the hook and rather than tying it that way or upwards tie it so the concave is facing down and that you get the stems in the middle and a good spread of fibers either side of the hook and get that in position pinch thread it up in between and loop it down so let's just show that again up see so i've pinched the thread so i've got free movement there side and back down and if you see it wrap a little bit you can twist it back before putting a good amount of locking turns in so the benefit of using the 18 thread here is a you've got the uh, you've got the strength of the nano silk which will allow you to pull down and really hold those materials in place but the thinness of the 18 allows you to put a lot more thread thread turns in than you would be able to with a with a wax thread um, or a zitzo or an ato uh, or equivalent to that right so now that's in position we're happy with it um, we're not going to cut out these wasted materials just yet uh, we're going to take our deer hair this is just a, a simple fairly all-purpose deer hair nothing too complicated um, I don't like to use elk uh, for this uh, I prefer a, just a simple deer hair I like the the color variation or the variation you get from light to dark to light again um, it's particularly good for our uh, granum caddis uh, looks very similar to their wings uh, that we get early in our season here so take a handful of them just a reasonable flattering and you'll get these furry fibers that get caught in into the mitts and just take the other hand and just stroke them out you can get a brush for this um, but I find that this works well enough for what I want and then we take our deer hair stacker which I'm going to do just out of frame where I drop them in tap them and they'll all be in position what I don't want to do here is lift that up that way because then I won't get hold turn it horizontally and remove the base section now you'll see that all the fibers are level placed in the right direction and I want to take it so it's already facing the way that I want to tie it in I don't want to do it the other way and then have to try and pass it from hand to hand and turn it around because by that point I'll lose the shape that I've created so pinch the, the ends swap hands briefly to line it up lie it on top there and we take our thread over and that first turn let it hold everything in shape but don't pull it too tight and take a couple in front of it then go behind with a few more and just add the pressure as you wind forward and you'll see those front fibers all ballooning out but back ones don't to the same extent and that's because we're putting the pressure on the front side and not the back there's always one bit of fiber that will get caught the way you don't want it you can tidy those up towards the end and just trap that out take it forward now make sure everything's secure because this is your big test now you're going to cut everything out and I cut it long uh, I quite like that all overshooting the front of the hook can make it a bit challenging when tying the tippet on but as long as you have confidence that you haven't blocked the eye of the hook uh, the tippet will go through with relative ease and then for the dubbing another great use of CDC 
is to use it as dubbing. Um, so here is one of the feathers that we've just cut off. And all I'm going to do is try cut some of the fibers away from the stem, pinch it with my thumbnail. You can, of course, cut the fibers off. And just a small pinching of it, you can dub it on. And being a lovely soft fiber, it dubs incredibly easily. And enough for a couple of turns round, and you've done the thorax of your of your seg. Right, now I've just taken a thread underneath there that will help move it out of the way of the eye for tying on any thread. Lengthen that off. Go in with the whip finish tool and a couple of times and again and there you have it you've got a CDC and deer hair sedge this is really really buoyant because you've combined the softer buoyancy of the CDC with the stiffer deer hair fibers which are hollow so they hold air which makes them really nice and buoyant you got a wonderful caddis shape and it will show up in any water really fast and if you're finding it's a bit tricky to see what you can do is either take out one of the cdc feathers or a little bit of the deer hair and trap in a, a sighter bit of um either aero wing or um or posting um, some sort of posting material in, a, in an orange or a pink and that will make it really visible particularly in low light conditions.